Okay, Patricia, today is December uh, 5, 2011, and this is approximately two years after your ketamine coma, correct? Yes. And, sir, why don't you just move up here a little closer? Yeah, get, get, into the, get into the picture here. Yeah. And um, so this is two years after your coma. I saw you about a year after your coma, and I just did your pain thresholds. There hasn't been any improvement there. And one of the things we talked about here, Patricia, is that you're on, still on the opioids and narcotics, which may be contributing to the fact that your pain thresholds have not improved. And we talked about how important it is for you to find a way to decrease your use on them. And to avoid uh, withdrawal symptoms, you can half the dose on a weekly basis and not worry about getting into withdrawal symptoms. So let's just say, for example, you're on 10 milligrams, hypothetically 10 milligrams of morphine a day, you can cut that in half as long as you've been on morphine for a week and you won't have withdrawal symptoms as long as you wait a week before you cut that down to five milligrams. Do you understand? You follow the protocol? Yes. Okay. So that's how you have to do it. In the meantime, it's important, also important to show up you have not had any ketamine boosters or so-called boosters or ketamine infusions since I saw you a year ago and that probably has contributed to the, the problems you're having right now, okay? Right. However, we just did some functional testing on you and I see some evidence, not complete, but some evidence of improvement there, okay? And we said that probably the reason you're, you've improved as much is probably through your heated pool exercises you've been doing. And we did talk about your heated pool exercises that, that you need to improve on those. You need to do it continuously. You don't just get in there and paddle around. You do, like say, do laps. You can swim. And you do it continuously. You don't stop and have a beer, okay? You just right. keep swimming the whole time. Uh -huh. And a good, uh, what's that? I'll have the beer. You'll have the beer? Okay. That sounds, sounds good. <laughs> He'll take the beer. Okay. You keep swimming, all right? Uh -huh. And a 30-minute and a workout is more, more than enough if it's continuous, okay? Okay. All right. Three times a week would be ideal, okay? Um, so when we talked about you measuring your exercise tolerance uh, week by week to see that you're making progress in that area, okay? okay. You ready for your exercises? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. One of the things I do want to document, and that's this, that when I put pressure on your skin, the sensation you experienced from the pain thresholds was a burning sensation, which tells me it's probably a neuropathic or nerve type related pain, okay? Right. Also, I did another test on you without you uh, without telling you about it. I knew it wouldn't hurt, wouldn't damage you, but I came up and put about three kilos on your forehead, and it and it was painful. Okay, mm -hmm. so we know that you don't have the type where you got reverse wires. In other words, where very light touch is painful, but a heavy touch is not perceived as being painful. You don't have that picture. Okay. Right. All right. Let's get started here. Look straight ahead. Don't look at me. Put the vertical two fingers in your mouth. See if you can get two fing vertical fingers in your mouth. This time. That's, Give it a try. That's right, right? Yep, that's right. Put two vertical fingers in your mouth. Can't do it? All right. You couldn't do it before, you can't do it now. All right. Next thing I want you to do is take that right hand and put it behind your head as best you can. Take it up there and put it behind your head as best you can. As best you can. Yeah. To keep your head straight, though. Okay, that's it? Mm -hmm. You're doing better t today than you were a year ago. Okay? Do the, le right, the left side, please. Same thing. All right? Mm -hmm. Good. Now, what, what, do you agree or disagree with me? She's got better mobility than she had a year ago. Do you agree or disagree? I agree that it seems that it came up a little faster. Yeah, 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 right. And she's not showing so much uh, anguish when she does that, right. right? Correct. Okay, very good. Okay, take that right hand out in front of you. Open and close it as fast as you can. Fast, 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 fast. Okay, very good. All right, do the other side, please. As fast as you can. Atta girl. Good job, good job. Okay, now the next thing I want you to do is I want you to rotate your ankle down there on the right side, please. Rotate it as best you can. Okay, wiggle your toes as best you can. Hitchhike back you from Philadelphia. Hitch, get your get your toe up there. All right, all right, that's fine. Okay, now on your left side, do the same thing. Rotate your ankle. Okay, wiggle your toes. Hitchhike back to Philadelphia. Okay, very good. All right, very good. Now. I want you to get up, and I want you to do as much as you can on your own, but I'm going to ask your husband to stand by your side simply because for safety reasons, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, let's, see you get, let's see her get out of the chair. I want to see how she gets out of the chair. That's it. Do that.
Do your best now. He's there if you need him, okay? But don't use him unless you need him. Go over by the door, please. That's it. There you go. That a girl. All barefoot, right? All right, turn around and face me. Now, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to walk toward me, please. Three steps. One, two, and three. And I see you're using the table for support. That's okay. Go on back now. Use a table if you need it, the, the, the counter if you need it. There you go. Now, when you did that, uh, Patricia, where did you have the pain? Shooting up my legs. Shooting up your legs, okay. But your feet are still the most painful part of the picture below your waist, correct? Yes. Okay, understood, understood. Now, um, hold her hand for her. Again, we're, gonna, we, we're not trying to torture you. just want to see what you can do. See if you can take a couple of steps on your toes. See if you can get up in your toes this time. <laughs> just try. If you can't do it, you can't do it. I don't think I can. Okay, that's fine. I, that's all I wanted you to do is try. Want to try your heels now? Can't do it, huh? No. Okay, Patricia, good good try. Go ahead and have a seat, please. Okay, Patricia, we covered some important things about the type of exercise you need to improve on. We talked about how it's important for you to slowly, slowly wean yourself from the opioids, right? Because I think that's contributing significantly to your problem. And when patients tell me they're taking the opioid because they can't sleep at night, I know they got a problem. Opioids are not a sleeping pill. And they will, as you know, make you constipated like you would not believe, okay? In fact, if we look really, really, really close at your eyes, guess what we're going to see? They're going to have a little brown color. <laughs> now, Patricia, that's the best laugh I've ever got. <laughs> that's the best laugh I've ever seen. Well, I'm glad you got a sense of humor. That's wonderful. Okay. You have to have a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get through the day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're absolutely correct on that one, okay? And so those are some things that I think I want you to, to keep in mind, okay? okay. And, it, and for you, either a coma or a high dose, starting at least at 60 milligrams an hour and going up to perhaps 200 milligrams an hour, four hours each day or a four-day period is probably another thing that's going to be of some benefit. But I really want you to try as best you can to do the heated pull exercises the way we, just, we described. And as soon as you get that well stabilized, don't try to do too many things at one time. See if you can try somehow or another wean yourself very slowly from the opioid, okay? Okay. Let's see if your husband has any questions. Any questions? Uh, no. Okay. No questions at this time. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> How about you, Patricia? Um, no. Okay, very good. Excellent. Uh, Patricia, there's one other thing I forgot to discuss with you, and I think it's extremely important. You're going to need some dental work done, okay? Right. To have that done adequately, they got to really numb your mouth down. they really got to do a good job, but you can't really open your mouth very well. So re really what needs to happen, you need, to have, you need to have a dentist that's going to take you into a, like an amatory surgical center where they can numb you down, but you're going to need some heavy sedation so they can get the job done. You understand? Right. Most importantly, they got to completely numb your mouth down to do any type of uh, dental work on you, okay? Right. And because they're going to be kind of aggressive with the, with the local anesthetic and the uh, general anesthetic type situation, uh, you're going to need to be monitored and the only way you can do that is in like an ambulatory surgical center Do you understand? Yeah, and they have to be aggressive in managing uh, your pain afterwards well, since you've been on uh, narcotics so long the morphine so long They're going to probably have to give you pretty large doses just to get you for two or three days out of that You understand? Right. And if the and if the dentist needs to talk to me about that I'd be glad to talk to him about it, okay. but you're not the kind that can just sit in a dental uh, a dental chair and and undergo a lot of pain and stress. It's not right. going to work for you. Now, does it uh, uh, is it a dentist or is it an oral surgeon? Um, it's probably going to. Well, it depends on what they're going to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, if it's teeth cleaning, probably it's going to be a dentist. But you, but even there, they have to be aggressive in controlling your pain. Right. Okay. Okay. And stress. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we talked about stress. Is stress positive, negative? What is stress? Just depends. That's on the right. Situation. It does. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's neutral. It depends right. on what you do with it, right? right? It can be very helpful, okay? Right. Or it can be uh, destructive. Right. Okay? All right. Very good.